literally hundreds of thunderstorms out there this afternoon. A bunch of them in the northeastern U.S. and the northern plains just covered with them. And we've got even more all the way down to Caprock into southwest Texas, where we've had tornadoes this afternoon. Let's take a look at the surface map. There you go. That tells the picture this afternoon. A weak frontal system in southwest Texas with an associated upper-level disturbance. And just around the periphery of the chart, we've got stuff going on. We've got Tropical Storm Arlene out there in the eastern Gulf. We've got a backdoor front in Maine and New Hampshire, Vermont, triggering thunderstorms up in that region. And also a weather system off the northwest coast approaching the state of Washington. And more rain once again up there in Montana, just day after day of rain showers with cold air coming down, temperatures in the 50s. And before we head to the northeastern U.S., let's look at the climate indices. The North Atlantic Oscillation has shifted into negative territory, which means the flow through the Atlantic is not as fast as what we typically see. So slower flow, blocking, that kind of thing. PNA shifting into the positive, so maybe some ridging in western Canada. The Arctic Oscillation going into the negative as well. The hemispheric flow, the annular flow around the North Pole, that is a little bit weaker than what we usually see. And the Matt and Julian Oscillation way over at the end of Phase 8. Typically it rotates around to Phase 1. But the models are looking like it's going to go more into a indeterminate state. And that tends to happen from time to time. The northeastern U.S., that's how things look this afternoon. Plenty of storms from Maine down through Vermont and upstate New York. Some showers moving into northern New York City and into eastern Pennsylvania. They've had some very warm temperatures this afternoon. And there's the station plots. You can see that we're well into the 90s in eastern Pennsylvania. 94 at Reading. They were up to 96 this afternoon. Temperatures in the upper 80s all the way into western New York. And lots of upper 70s and lower 80s out around Albany and Hartford. In the southeastern U.S., a little bit drier than what we have seen lately. However, still enough moisture for thunderstorms in northern Alabama, northern Georgia, and back into Arkansas. And out there in the Gulf, there's Tropical Storm Arlene. There it is. 35 knot winds, so barely a tropical storm, 10,002 millibars, and moving to the south-southeast. And we talked about that back on Wednesday. Here's a look at it on AWIPS using the 40-kilometer NAM. This is almost exactly the way the Weather Service forecasters would see it. This is the same system that they use. So there it is, Tropical Storm Arlene moving south. If we go hour to hour, you can see that southward drift. I've got the contour intervals at one millibar interval, so you can really pick that out. And you can see that spiral band of showers into the storm. So that is going to move south and weekend and turn into a remnant low by tomorrow. So there's 6 a.m. And there's tomorrow evening. So grazing western Cuba, filling to a central pressure of 1003 millibars, and then just getting carried off down the Cuban landmass. So that's where we're at for Sunday evening. In the southern plains, we've had some action. Enhanced risk from Lubbock down to Midland and down around Sanderson. Now the areas you're going to watch, right around Fort Stockton and out there near Seminole. So we roll that forward. This is going to be about 11 in the morning. And you can see those storms spring to life, especially that southern storm. That's what Tim Marshall always referred to as Old Faithful. In other words, when we get a big tornado outbreak somewhere up in the Panhandles, something down around the Davis Mountains or Fort Stockton usually gets going. Now, both of these areas did have tornadoes. This is a great photo from Bill Hark. Got this a couple of hours ago between Fort Stockton and Bakersfield, close to Interstate 10. Bill's website is at harkphoto.com, so you can check out more of his tornado photography. Here's a look at what we have going on right now. Multiple storms south of Bakersfield, south of Sheffield, and 
Those definitely look super cellular, a couple of tornado warnings on that. Then we've got another storm down south of Sanderson, just a severe warning on that one. Further up north, other cells. About three hours ago, we did have a tornado warning for Seminole. These storms rapidly lined out and kind of looks outflow dominant at this time. And there's a quick look at the Lubbock radar. There was a brief tornado warning in Motley County. And a lot of it looks kind of like a big old mess. More storms out there in eastern New Mexico. In the northern plains, numerous, numerous cells popping up with afternoon heating. However, most of these storms are in a general risk. All we've got really is just a marginal risk in the high plains, although we did manage to squeak out one tornado near Aurora. That was about 4.10 p.m. this afternoon. The southwestern U.S. looking pretty good, except on the higher terrain. A few storms around Albuquerque, back to Gallup and Flagstaff, but off the Mogollon Rim and down in the lower deserts, clear as a bell, and even a decrease in thunderstorm activity in western Nevada. These showers and thunderstorms continue to be quite numerous up there in Montana. It's been a very, very rainy spring and summer there so far. However, out there in Seattle, they are in a drought. Seattle is six inches below normal for this year. Their total for the year is 12.8 inches, and typically they should be seeing 18.9. So there's the weather map for that part of the country, then heading north. There's that occlusion off of British Columbia, then heading up into Alaska, another outbreak of cold air, temperatures back in the 30s and 40s, very cool, and a little bit of cold rain from Barter Island down towards Tok and Big Delta. Cold front moving through Yukon, temperatures ahead of it in the 60s and 70s. Kind of ironic that you've got warmer air there in the McKenzie River Delta compared to Anchorage or Fairbanks. Cold as we would expect there in the Canadian High Arctic. They have not really had much of a warm up so far this summer. Well, it's not even summer yet. But yeah, troughing up in that region. Some snow showers from Baffin Island up to Resolute. And then we go back down to the south. There's a cold, high pressure area in Quebec, and that's feeding cool air into the northeastern U.S. and helping to drive that backdoor front. So let's get things sorted. When is summer? 21st of June. Today is the 2nd, so we're looking at just under three weeks. And I probably will be taking my quarterly break around then, maybe 18th through 24th, or possibly on the following week. We'll just kind of check things out. If we have a big severe weather pattern, I'm going to postpone that. So we'll try to schedule that for a quiet week. As far as the upcoming week, let's see what we're looking at. This starts out this evening. There's that upper level trough. This is the 500 millibar heights in vorticity. And this is helping to destabilize the atmosphere and helping to prime the environment for those thunderstorms we have in the panhandles. So that's going to continue moving northeast or to the north. And you can see that going into tomorrow that we'll move up into Kansas and Nebraska. So more storms expected in that part of the country. Up to the north, we can see ridging, 587 decameter high up there in Manitoba. So that's gonna mean warm weather in that part of the country down into the Great Lakes and Northern Plains. And then going into the start of the work week, we're gonna get a one, two, three punch. There's number one off the coast of Maine, off of Boston. Here comes number two, which is gonna be even stronger. So this is gonna be Tuesday and Wednesday, so a big upper level low across the northeastern U.S. Destabilization, maybe some showers, much cooler weather. And here comes number three, moving through Lake Huron for Wednesday evening and down into the Midwest for Thursday. So all three of those will help drive cool air and drier air into the eastern part of the country and maybe a little bit of a backdoor front here in Texas. We could definitely use that. In the central U.S., though, that ridging will be hanging tight. Meanwhile, in the West Coast region, I'm going to back this up so you can kind of follow along. You can see that upper level low right there coming on shore in California for Monday. 
sits for a couple days, and then gradually moves on off to the northeast for late week. So very likely a few showers or at least an increase in shower activity in the southwest part of the country as that passes. Here's a look at the temperatures for tomorrow. These are highs for Saturday. Now the red shading indicates above normal temperatures. The blues and greens indicate below normal temperatures. So cool 60s and 70s for Colorado, New Mexico, West Texas, and quite warm out there in Chicago and Minneapolis, close to 90 degrees. There's how things look on Sunday, just a continuation of the warm weather. Monday, we see the warm weather move to the west a little bit. Tuesday, moving into the Dakotas, heat breaking out around Portland, up to Seattle, 78 degrees at Seattle. And for Wednesday, continued warm in the northwest and North Dakota, and much the same for Thursday. So kind of a stagnant weather pattern here. And let's check out that moisture flow. This is the one kilometer specific humidity. This is one of my favorite charts. This is kind of like looking at dew points up at 3,000 feet AGL, not MSL. This does not intersect the terrain. So this is useful out there in the high plains because it's always above the ground, about the same level as Alabama or Arkansas. So we can definitely see the moisture and we can see where it has some depth as well, feeding those storms out there around the Pecos River and on up into the Panhandles. And with that, southeasterly flow, a bit of a low-level jet there around Del Rio. And we can see that circulation out there with Tropical Storm Arlene. So let's put it into motion and go into the overnight hours and into Saturday. More moisture flowing up into Texas, although with the weakening of the upper level flow, not as many storms. And you can see there, yeah, let me back that up, 15Z. This is when we sh should be seeing that low level jet, but only winds of 10 to 20 knots. So the dynamics are not there. A little bit of low pressure up there in Kansas, and that's gonna be associated with that short wave moving up north and a little bit of moisture with that. So we're focusing on Kansas probably for tomorrow, but there's another moisture axis up into the Childress area Saturday night into Sunday. So we lose the dynamics, but we're still pumping moisture west and northwest. And some of it starts filtering into New Mexico as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday. We are starting to get into that monsoon season. In June, there's usually an increase in thunderstorms and showers in New Mexico. And then as we get into July, we start seeing it reach the Four Corners, Arizona, Utah. And that's when we get the true onset of the southwest monsoon. And if we take that all the way back to this weekend, you're going to see the cold, dry flow start to come south from the northeastern U.S. There it is spreading down the eastern seaboard into the Mississippi River region. We get some troughing and cyclogenesis through the southeastern U.S., probably an increase in thunderstorms and showers. And that boundary pushes south all the way down to Texas. So that'll be a big change coming up for late next week. This is going to be Friday here. And maybe a cold front, somewhat like that. You can see the anticyclone up to the north, high pressure back from the Delmarva to Illinois. So some pleasant conditions back there, but that flow of tropical moisture is starting up already once again. And I think I've talked long enough. There's our little MCS out there from Childress to about Post and Snyder and down towards Midland. And we'll check on that other cell. That's getting to be about the maximum radar range, but a cluster of, looks like strong multi-cells, maybe, I don't know if there's a supercell in there or not, but echo tops are well up above 50,000 feet, and they're continuing to produce tornado warnings. And that's all I got for this edition of Forecast Lab. A little bit of footage from Greg out there in San Antonio from yesterday. And I have been investing some funds into upgrading the tools to get this program out even faster. So I thank you for your contributions on Patreon. It is very much appreciated. So we'll see you back here on Monday for the 
live stream for the supporters and on Wednesday for everybody else. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.